Welcome back guys, this is part two out of three parts for the video about this mock rebuild from the Lighthouse of Darkness into the House Build of Dankness, so let's check it out. Here we are after uh, the first iteration of the rebuild, which uh, might be the last iteration as well. I'm pretty happy with the result. We've ended up with some kind of uh, paddle-powered houseboat, and it does have some extra equipment up here. I'm just thinking this is some kind of foghorn system and then a secondary horn with the uh, crab motif. So this is maybe like a multi-purpose, multi-family vessel, multiple people going on uh, a trip here or something with, with different motives. Uh, so I guess we'll start up here on the front porch and this is where that inverted uh, section turns upwards and then this front rail here is actually completely upside down and that continues around the corner until you get to the main house section and that part is upright. Uh, so we have Claus and Parker on the front deck. Now Claus has something that looks like a gun but it's actually a remote control for this robot and this robot is just a robotic buoy that's traveling, uh, driving or traveling in front of the boat uh, maybe guiding them through the fog but also could be looking for something. I had enough rock pieces left over to build some kind of island or outcropping and our skeleton guy could have been marooned on such an outcropping at some point. So trying to go with the open-ended story mindset uh, that LEGO usually includes in their sets as well, try to include some of that in my alternate build. So the robotic buoy here uh, being controlled by this remote, or it could just be a fog gun, you know, because that's how you get rid of fog. Uh, I really do like this lantern, how that turned out. I ended up doing something really simple with the harpoon piece um, and that goes in the cross axle hole on this 1x5 pretty nicely. Uh, I've got the life preserver design on this side and something different on the other side. I didn't have the same color pieces. so And then a little bit of leaf detail, like a little bit of moss, overgrown stuff on the awning over the front. And that awning does have a little bit of play. So for the front, yeah, just looking at trying to add in some detail here and get a little creative with the leaves on the awning. We'll turn it around to the back, and now we have almost more of a Western-style um, porch with a, a different awning in dark green on the back here. And it worked out really nice. Um, with the width on the front, I used all of these white curved slopes, and then on the back, there were just enough dark green ones to do the same curvature around the corner and actually match up with the wooden railing on that curved profile around the corner. It's not a perfect match, but it's pretty close. So that, that goes around the back. There's not really a back wall, but it's pretty protected, especially considering that we have a window and door in the front here. And I even got a little handle on that door. It's looking pretty cool. So like I mentioned earlier on, uh, the paddles are the main driving force here, and those do spin around. Um, they're actually only connected on the side closest to the boat. The other side looks like it's connected, but it's actually just two one by two clips. Um, and that doesn't really connect at all, but it might help a little bit if you're pinching it right here. That is kind of supporting it, depending on where you're going to grab it to be spinning it around. And this has been one of the most problematic sections. These do come off every now and then. Um, they're just attached with that two by two uh, it's just a bracket, not really a bracket, you know, your wall section piece that fits right in there. So it's on that swivel, 4x4 four four swivel, and then that gets attached. I'm not going to put it on because I only have one hand free. Alright, the roof section is next, so I guess aside from the conning tower, the conning tower actually does have the bat hanging there, just hanging out, and then this is what I'm calling the foghorn. So we got to have some kind of beneficial purpose for the boat. It can't just be old cause out with his fog gun. So to get the roof off, um, I would recommend lifting it underneath the green awning. And well, I say recommend because at some point I'd like to have this available on re rebrickable as instructions that you guys could buy um, if you're remotely interested in building this thing. So a little bit uh, of force just to get it off the studs, holding it on here. Um, there's plenty going on on the underside of this because I was running out of pieces. So just trying to hold things together there got a little bit messy. 
but it's holding together for the most part and now we can see what's going on inside uh, Jenny is singing karaoke with the candle powered speakers there is a reclining chair in here that I'm pretty happy with and I ended up attaching that to the porch railing with another 1x2 clip so that's not going to slide around at all it's pretty fixed in place the only issue is uh, if the minifigures are sitting up too high their head will hit the awning where that's hanging down because that awning does hang pretty low and then to actually drive this thing we've got uh, what's this guy's name again oh Jack yeah that's Jack Jack is driving the boat and there's just a pretty simple pilot chair up at the top of a short ladder here this ladder is actually built out of the 2x3 shield element with another bar and clips on the inside of that uh, staircase and then he's on that tan chair it's offset by half of a stud just using a uh, 2x2 jumper plate or double jumper as some people call it and some handlebars here uh, are centered as well just to keep him uh, away from that wall enough to be up inside the conning tower when that is set back on top. So let's put that back on real quick. So there's two attachment points on the front, underneath here and here. And now we can see that Jack does have a pretty good line of sight through the conning tower. It lines up pretty good. This piece isn't pushed down all the way. So the connection points here, just kind of working with what I had to get that get that done, satisfactory enough for me, and ended up with a pretty decent little mock uh, that is a rebuild of the Lighthouse of Darkness, hidden side set 70431, and definitely didn't use all the pieces. What have we got extra here? A bunch of bricks and some plates, odds and ends. Uh, these two giant green teeth didn't really have a home for those. I did set this section aside because if you wanted to just absolutely maximize your foghorn height here, you could add another module and just get that thing up actually above the fog probably and then it wouldn't do any good. Um, so just for fun you could extend that. I was able to use these little purple ones as an awning here. Just trying to keep things coherent but also like uh, mix it up a little bit because there's quite a variety of pieces available to work with here in the set. And for smaller pieces, worked through those pretty good. And then I ended up using one of the stickers off the sticker sheet. Now I think these would look really nice up in the conning tower, um, but I'm not sure which pieces they originally go on. This one I could probably manage to stick on a 1x2 tile or a 1x2 cheese slope and get that up in the conning tower for Jack. but. Not really a priority. The only sticker I used is on the robot buoy that's going to be moving ahead of the paddle boat. So I will figure out what to name this thing and then try to put it together in studio. And I really like putting these sets together in studio because uh, the way that you put the pieces in order in that program makes it a lot easier to actually generate the instructions. And if you do it right, most of the time you only have to go through and make some minor edits, um, positioning the model in studio in the instruction builder and getting that finalized. It's a lot easier than anything else I've tried to date, um, but all of the work is in the initial build of the model in the program. So, uh, yeah, I've done a little look at studio instructions on the channel. Um, definitely more to be said about that, but I don't know. At one, at one point, I'll be talking about that again. Uh, that's about it for this video, just looking at a rebuild of that hidden side set. And uh, yeah, turned out pretty sweet. So thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time on Brick System Brothers.